In this lens, we're talking, we're looking at shadow boards, new tripod technology, and big powerful lights. Stick around. Hi, hello everybody. Hello, Art. Hey, everybody. Ida. Uh, and we're doing Lens Fit Talk 15 today. Racking uh, them up. Okay, so let's start. Uh, we have uh, a few products, uh, a few interesting topics, not just products. Uh, and the first, I think, is a review that you've been working on for a long while. I think since uh, IBC last year, since yeah. uh, September. It's the YC Onion um, tripod. Yeah, Pinata. Pinata. As to, we need to check the the pronunciation of all these things. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, but uh, this is. We, how we I finally think. found out what uh, we finally found out what Juwen sounds like. Yeah, that that we did. <laughs> but we had to go to Amsterdam to find out. Yeah. <laughs> So we should have asked what they... Uh, How do you call called. the actual piñata? It looks like pineta, but maybe piñata. I don't know. Anyway, it's uh, it's it's their new technology. We did the, we did the monopod. monopod. Yeah. It's a one-lock mechanism to unlock each leg, right? Like So the, basically it's three locks and... It, they go uh, up and down. Yeah. Uh, it's great. It's a very beefy monopod. Yeah. It's fi- uh, carbon it has a fiber. Handle. It has a handle to kind of carry it around, which uh, I don't know if it's great. The center of gravity is a little bit yeah, strange. It's a little you need long. to get used to it. It's it's very high up to where the head is, so it's it's kind of hard to carry. But it has these locks on the leg, so you can actually carry it by the by the leg. Yeah. If it's locked, then I'm not sure how, like in the long run, how those will stand up. I, I, used to, I use it, I uh, think, in, in one of our uh, productions recently, and uh, I, it took me a while to really understand the locking mechanism. It's it's supposedly very easy, but y- y- it needs some... Uh, it has, yeah, it's like you unlo- the... It's kind of a standard lock to where you spread the legs of the tripod, and then it has an extra step to it, and where, like... Um, the other way around, like to to lock it in. But you need to push the the. Um, it, it has a bottom and a lever, so yeah. So it's you can you have you close the legs first, and then it'll go in. But once once they're open to to some degree, then it won't yeah. it won't work. So it, it's a little bit of a yeah. You kind of have to play with it, but it's great. I mean, it's 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 very strong, very beefy. The um, the leg locks, yeah, are really nice. You can there's a little fail safe. You just pop them up. Uh, if I remember, the, the height. does it have um, um, basically? I think a three eighths quarter inch uh, connector with R pins, pin holes, yeah, right? Yeah. That, that, this is this is something I like. Yeah, uh, they should all come like that. Our, yeah, but. that's a st- that should be a standard. So that's the YC Onion Tripod uh, review uh, mm-hmm. coming up. I'm not sure if when this will be published comp- uh, in relation to the to the actual review, but yeah. if it's not published by the time that we publish this, then probably very soon. Uh, another thing, uh, different uh, product. This is something. This is interesting because it's it's a uh, Cine Regs by uh, Cine. Mild? So milled? milled, yeah, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's basically a muslin diffusion products for uh, the aperture um, Dome. domes, um, uh, soft boxes. So usually, with all sorts of all sort of soft boxes that uh, we ever used, you have this um, nylon, nylon, yeah, um, polyester, maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the material is. We have. It's few. never great. Yeah, it's usually like the cheapest even on the, fabric, even, and even on the higher end one, it's not really because. Good. Well, I never thought of it actually. I mean, it has to, it it does the job. It diffuses, right? But maybe it can do a better job. But these guys, uh, cine rags, are exploring different types of fabrics. Yeah. So muslin is like thicker fabric than yeah. this. It's it's um, I've if just, you think like the old school fabrics, you know the. They're they're more rustic. It's more, uh, it's more like a um, clothing fabric than it is. Than, yeah. yeah, but it's it's porous, right? It's got like the yeah. um, the light actually shines through. So it's basically like a micro perforated um, fabric. I'm my own. It'll probably it will reduce the the intensity of the think. light considerably. But yeah. you have you have a, a lot of lights now which are like six hundred and above. Exactly. And for those, you know, sometimes you use them on like ten percent. So 
you know, it's it's no problem to so raise the the output to thirty percent and or fifty percent and. You still have in a plenty of light yeah. but you have better diffusion so I know it's 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 in then they also have like a bleach version and a not bleach version so yeah. like it, it gives white a, a and color a little cast. bit uh, yellowish uh, it will be Warms a tint but sometimes you might want that yeah so if you uh, have a, a, a daylight co- uh, light and then you throw that on and it gives it will you a be little a little warmth. warmth yeah so that's Work. that's interesting uh, it's an interesting product would be interesting if if there would be this is specifically for the aperture uh domes if there was something like this for like a more universal I sort don't of... see why anybody would not use it if it if it actually works no but it's it's a size thing more no I'm saying I don't see why other companies wouldn't create something like that for just a some any oh, size of the dome. airlights yeah yeah maybe Godox I don't know okay it's an it's a it's an interesting uh, product I would definitely like to test it we don't have aperture domes we can ask them but well yeah the lantern yeah no that's 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 a different one this is an interesting plugin uh, it's called firecut and uh, it's for premiere pro mm-hmm. you're not a premiere pro user but you actually looked at this at least not the video me. Uh, I think uh, there is this uh, YouTuber called Premiere Girl. Uh, I have her. Um, she she's actually very good. She she has um, a, a plugin of her own, which I use all the time. It's actually very good. And and she did a review or a presentation of this uh, Firecut plugin. And mm-hmm. you looked at that. Uh, what feature? It's is an it? AI plugin that offers uh, multiple features. Some of the other ones that we've talked about here in, in this segment and just played around with, they do like one or two specific things. Yeah, this, this one does a has lot of things, a, lot of uh, a list, and they're saying that they'll be adding more. So it'll, the AI will look at it. Basically, it's a, uh, it's a tool to give you a rough cut of your footage quickly. Uh, automatically, within minutes, right? Yeah. So it'll get rid of the, the pauses, the, the dead takes, uh, it'll throw in transcribe I think transcription it, and yeah. some subtitles and um, also yeah. also things yeah um, does it have I'm not sure if this is is this plugin or a different one that uh, cuts like w- when we're doing like uh, this sort of talk changes it uh, changes the speakers the, the, speakers, the no the, the like the, the angle the angle for the speaker it's this one or the, uh, no one? that was a different one oh, I'm okay. not sure if this one I don't see why not I mean if you're doing an all in one video plugin then yeah that, you'll probably do that that would be really useful I mean I, it's not like I'm spending too much time editing these this video and, and this is the, the part that takes me the longest uh, uh, it just adds up because you know these things can drag sometimes but uh, I know it's it's if it saves time then it saves time I don't necessarily always uh, move between speakers so sometimes when I speak and you say something short I will keep yeah. the, the the video on me I, because that, otherwise it will be like too yeah, jittery. that's the thing that I, I saw with that other plugin that actually does the, the, the cuts for the speakers because a lot of the times you say one word and it's a it's a quick cut, cut. You have to go back and then get rid of those. So I would just it needs add to be a little the option to decide how what... long of a cut. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the Firecut plugin for Premiere Pro. Uh, this is something that we're actually going to test. I I just got a message today. Uh, Came TV came up with new V mount batteries, fifty and ninety nine watt hour mm-hmm. uh, V mounts. And these ones, we saw the um, small rig ones on uh, on IBC. These ones are, I would say, pretty uh, comparable. Mm-hmm. I didn't test them, but uh, we will. But th- the idea is that they have um, basically almost all the connections that you might think. They have a screen, a uh, new, slightly larger, I think, screen. They're they're small batteries, small. They're VMs. mini batteries, so they're they're about half the size, the thickness of a regular. Are they smaller than the... Uh, you tested uh, some of their previous generation v- uh, mini V-mounts, you remember? Uh, like we well, have them in here. Yeah, they tend to get a little smaller, but this one is a big I, step down. Really? We are saw they the, smaller than what we have? They look like they're... I haven't yeah. checked, but in the photos, they look like they're half 
the thickness. We, we will get them. So, so I'm really excited about yeah, that. Yeah, so they have USB-A, USB-C, PD. They can charge, I think, from USB-C. Yeah, it's a two-way which, USB-C. Uh, I think all, all, U, uh, all V-mails should charge now from yeah. USB-C. Not all of them do, but they should. Uh, and it has 1D DAP, which I've seen some people, you know, commenting that they would like to see too, but that's small, so, you know, it is what it is. And what else? Um, was there anything else at uh, CA? Ah, and, and you had like, I think, 8, uh, uh, eight volts and 12 volts uh, outputs, I think. Not sure. I'm not sure. Okay, I'll, I'll show them on the screen. So... That's cool, and we'll have a review after we test, get them and test mm-hmm. them at some point later this year. Uh, iFootage has a, a new light projector. I think uh, last time we talked about their light intensifier and their new light, the 220. Yeah, the uh, so this is uh, a, a new projector. We are going to talk about uh, projectors. I don't know. We talked about projectors. We in, talked in, about Godox and Aperture yeah. came out. Oh, uh, yeah. That was in a previous video. Uh, this one from the video. It looks smaller, right? It looks smaller. It looks... I didn't see if it has this uh, 360 gobo turn. Exactly. So. There's a lot of features that they don't show and we're not... Uh, I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm sure not sure if yeah. they're in there. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like if you're trying to catch up because this is a couple of months after the other ones came out yeah you kind of want all the features yeah and if you know so the have... specific aspect of being able to easily turn the gobo 360 is really important it is like because otherwise it's really annoying you need to take it out start spinning test it but one thing that they do have that i hadn't seen on the other ones or we haven't tested yeah. the other ones is uh gels all of them can take gels, but it yeah, depends but they, on how comfortable it is to actually mount them. Exactly. Whether you can, it, how well it's integrated yeah, is the exactly. question. And then these things get hot. If you're have, burning your gels. And... I have some ideas for all this topic, which again, I won't share. I, I said it in the past. I won't share here, but at some point, hopefully... We can do something on this uh, on this uh, aspect, but anyway, it's it's a new projector by iFootage. So now we have the Godox, the uh, Aperture, the iFootage, and obviously there are others from other companies. But it's it's you know it's getting crowded in mm-hmm. this uh, uh, in this niche. Lexer announced uh, a new professional CF Express Type A four point zero uh cards mm-hmm. and what's special about them is the speed so so far the 3.0 or whatever the previous generation they were going up to do you remember 800 900 yeah, megabytes per like second mm-hmm. uh, max this one is Crazy. 16 6, 1650 or something like that megabytes per second mm-hmm. that's that's a big jump but, and that's or eight, 1,800, depending on the reason, right? The big thing is that no camera at the moment, no Sony camera, because only Sony uh, uses the CF Express Type A. No Sony camera currently supports uh, CF Express Type A 4.0. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to help you with the camera in any respect, maybe in the future, but at the moment, it, it's not going to help you. But it is going to help you when taking the camera or downloading it, down the, downloading it from the camera to the computer. Right. And they're also announcing a card reader, which is CF Express Type A4. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing it's going to be their Thunderbolt or more probably USB, USB 4 or something like that because it needs to be faster. And, and actually for that, it's, it's, it's a good idea. And I, I think I wrote to them. I don't, I don't remember. I think it's, I don't remember if it's the first one or the second one, which is like a CF Express type A. Mm-hmm. Um, but if, if we can test one of those, it will be interesting to see how much actually they're faster than the previous generation in transferring to the computer. Well, something that fast, uh, it could even use it for storage. If you have a, a big... In the field storage, like yeah. you have a, a big card, like 320 gigs or something like that, and it's really fast, you can just offload your stuff to it. In IBC, for example, we took with us uh, SSDs. Right. If you have a big one, you can, as you say, use it in as SSD, but the question is, is it more, is it cheaper? I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. A big one, like one terabyte? 
I don't know. I, I think they have one terabyte for this one. I think. I'm not sure. Godox has, again, we don't, <laughs> apparently we don't have a Lens with Talk without a Godox product. <laughs> Uh, so now they officially announce, or I don't know, uh, it's it's officially available, mm. the Godox MG2400 bicolor. So that's their most powerful COB. It's like, uh, I, I think uh, both uh, them and Aperture and then Light have a 24. Right. They, they keep competing on the, the highest, uh, the brightest one. So this one is a, it's called the MG2400 by, but it's actually a 2900 watt. 2900. No, the, it, it, the draw is 2900, right. up to 2900, but the output is 2600. Right. So it's, I'm not sure why they call it 24, but whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's 2600 output across um, 2600. What wow. output across the entire bicol range? That's that's impressive. Yeah. And they also have a new 4K para and um, par and a 6K Fresnel. Mm-hmm. So that's that's interesting. Um, spe- specifically for this because yeah, the mount is yeah. yeah yeah it's it's uh, we saw the prototype. It's it's a beast. Uh, it's huge. I'm not sure if we actually ever uh, will ever test these very, very high ones. Maybe a 1K makes sense for what we do. But beyond that, it starts, it gets complicated in terms of electricity and stuff like that. Right. It's not, it, I mean, you can, in in Europe is easier from what I understand in the US because, you know, the, the 220 versus the 110. Mm-hmm. But even in Europe, it's like if you have one of these and then you start adding other lights, <laughs> you can trip the the box, and that that's that's an issue. So that's uh, that's the Godox. There is a new review by our friends from the media division, and mm-hmm. uh, maybe you can say something about it. this uh, uh, review on the DZO Pavo um, anamorphic lenses. Yeah. Uh, did you, you saw yeah, this <laughs> again media division every time every video that uh, Nicholas has is, is a celebration is a in my book yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's like they, they work on it they put it out it's Once, yeah. so it's like an encyclopedia of knowledge in each episode even not it not like the whole th- yeah. the, the whole channel each one it'll just go through and tell you what we're what, gonna what see did he do in this one is he tested um what aspect of anamorphic like it's it's a review the, basically but yeah i mean he talks about what anamorphic is is it separate i don't know if more no than he one talked about anamorphic video. in general i think in they love videos. like he loves anamorphics and yeah. then they took it on the on a shoot and they did comparisons and it's it's great. I mean, this uh, according to his findings in in this uh, review, he found them to be really good. And then yeah, it was your report. so uh, yeah the 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 lenses. Uh, I think that the the simpler answer here is just go watch the the video if you're interested in uh, so in anamorphic lenses do or just a favor. yeah and just uh, just watch the episode. And so that's the media division uh, video. Um, there is a new monitor which. I never heard about this company. Did, have you ever heard about Ovid? Ovid, Ovid, Ovid Coco, ten no. inch monitor. Yeah, we did a monitor recorder, and that's yeah. that's the. There are not a lot of recorders. I'm I'm really surprised that I, we are not seeing like a lot more Chinese manufacturers coming up okay. with recorders because there are so many monitors, like five and seven inch monitors. Yeah, all kinds. But recorders. Like I know this is like the fourth or fifth company that I know that makes recorders, mm-hmm. but I know what's what is stopping the Chinese ones from. Maybe it's like Codex require all sorts of like uh, program patents. No, no patents oh, and stuff. I, I don't know because otherwise, why why there are so few like field recorders? So th- this one is like a ten inch. And it's a monitor recorder, but it's 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 interesting because it has um it's it's an all SDI. I think it 
I'm not sure if it even have an HDMI, maybe one HDMI, uh, which for what we do is not really relevant. If they, if they will, you know, I'll try and talk to them, but if they will have like an HDMI version of that, uh, that can be interesting for us. Um, it has either one 4K or four 1080p. Uh, we're actually, when we're recording this, we're actually using a 22, 23-inch uh, monitor with um, four, like, Big HDMI uh, uh, connections. No. But that's that's a big one that we usually have only in the studio or take to a big production. But for smaller ones and for something portable, it would yeah, be nice to have, size, like, yeah. a 10-inch 4K, not 4K, 10-inch uh, four uh, in- HDMI inputs. Mm-hmm. That, that could be cool. Uh, it's not really cheap. Uh, the, the company is from Spain, by the mm-hmm. way. So I know. Uh, I'll talk to them and see if you know if they if they have other plans to do other different monitors. But it's like I think three thousand dollars, something like that. Uh, and they have either a gold mount or V mount uh, battery option. So that's the Ovide Coco ten inch monitor recorder. Uh, v flat have a new. Um, line of products v flat uh, for those who don't know do well v flats uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, l- white slash black backgrounds that you can mm-hmm. carry and fold and uh and take with you uh, so they have it's it's called shadow boards and it's basically a large gobo cook- cookie, gobo cookie yeah. yeah something mm-hmm. like that it's a it's a cool it's a cool concept mm-hmm. uh, we have um these sort of like big cookies with like um, uh, slats yeah either a window uh, sort of thing or what else do we have I know another well like a a tree pattern I think yeah yeah okay so this one uh, but they're pretty heavy and they require like you need to usually uh, use them with like a a knuckle um, like a a light stand uh, Mm -hmm. knuckle and you connect them to that and then you can play with them but again they're like professional grip equipment which is heavy and i wouldn't say very expensive you can make them your own i mean it's not it's not a big deal no um but yeah that's that's the shadow board i put i think uh, we have a video of that so i can show how it works it's it's pretty straightforward you know no. they, they can make you know as many patterns as they want and it's cool uh, so that's the v flat shadow boards and finally, we have, um, well, th- th- that's that's something which is, I wouldn't call it, it's not a photography thing, but I found it and, and I think it's for some people who are like, sort of like photography or videography and, and they also do a lot of DIY stuff. Um, like for the studio, we, we keep building things. I keep building all sorts of, it's not just rigs, it's all sorts of things to because we shoot products so you need yeah, to hold and things and we just set something up yeah. hang stop and 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 the lights and hold and you know bes- besides actually making products which is something that we we started doing about two years ago and we talked about the the new l bracket and there are more mm-hmm. on the way we actually do build all sorts of prototypes and just things that we use so there is this video um coming from a person who does all sorts of like 3D printed uh, uh, reviews and and videos. And he tested all sorts of uh, ways to create uh, threads in 3D prints. Mm -hmm. So there are a bunch of ways of doing this uh, for people who are into 3D printing. Uh, You can either print the threads into whatever it is that you're making or they're like threaded inserts from metal or from all sorts of games. Yeah. And he tested, he did a comparison of all the different ones, which are stronger, which are weaker, what point uh, is more likely to break. Mm. Uh, and for photography, I think it's really imp- it, 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 like it's important because if you're printing something that you need um, for like, like I don't know a rig for a camera. Sometimes you you do all sorts of three uh, D printing. You sometimes need to do to have threads, either three eighths, quarter inch, or whatever, and and you want them to be like strong. Mm-hmm. So I, I would suggest if if this interests you, go and watch this video. Uh, it had this guy had some interesting conclusions which are worth uh, noting, and we will. At some point, we'll have a 3D printer, and and we're talking about this for a long time, and and start 
mess like messing with with all sorts of like 3d printed things for either products or for the studio uh so that's that's the threaded uh, video on on 3d printed threads <laughs> basically and uh, so that was a relatively short one and uh, oh, yeah yeah All we got for Let's Be Talk 15. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, as always. Uh, Check out the website. The website, the full article with all the links to all these uh, topics, as well as in the description. And uh, we'll see you, as always, in the next video. Yeah. Bye. Bye, all. In this Let's Be Talk, we're looking at shadow boards, big powerful lights, and new Let's Be Talk. What? New lens with technology. New lens with technology. <laughs> In this lens with talk, we're looking at new tripod. <clears throat> Car. <laughs> The robot vacuum decided to pay us a visit. <laughs>